Today, I would like to share my experiences of using the Fissinger, Hudson, and Hanson's marathon training systems as an older recreational runner. I started running races in 2005 in my adult life at 35 years of age. However, I didn't start running marathons until the end of 2008. As a mediocre 21 minute 5k runner, I had a very challenging goal of running a sub 315 marathon in order to qualify for the Boston Marathon, and I only got six months to do it. During that time, one of the most popular training systems is the Fissinger Method. Officially, it should be called the Fissinger Douglas System. You can find all the details in the book Advanced Marathoning. In my opinion, the Fissinger system is heavily influenced by Arthur Lydiard, the legendary coach. Although you can choose your target mileage in the Fissinger system, it does recommend a higher mileage and building a strong aerobic base. The book does contain sample training plans of various durations and peak mileages. For durations, the sample plans offer three options, 12 week, 18 week, and 24 week. For peak mileage, the sample training plans only offer two options, 55 mile or 70 mile. One of the key concepts that Lydiard advocates is periodization. The Fissinger system adopts this concept and divides the build-up into four phases that he calls mesocycle. There is also a recovery week after every four weeks of training. The first mesocycle is about endurance. There are lots of recovery, easy, medium long runs, and long runs. Many of these runs are done at what he calls the general aerobic pace. There are also lots of strides in many of the runs for us to work on our running mechanics as well as some basic speed. There are also a couple of lactate threshold runs. The second mesocycle is about lactate threshold and endurance. There are still a lot of recovery runs, medium long runs, and long runs at the general aerobic pace. However, there are a lot more lactate threshold runs. There are also a couple of VO2 max runs for us to start working on some speed. The most special workout in this cycle, in my opinion, is the 16 mile run with 12 miles at marathon pace. Also, the longest long run of the whole buildup is in this mesocycle, and it is a 23 mile long run. The third mesocycle is about race preparation. However, it is not about the taper, which is the last three weeks of the buildup cycle. The third mesocycle is the few weeks just before the taper. It still contains a lot of recovery runs, medium long runs, and long runs at the general aerobic pace. In addition, there are lots of VO2 max runs as well. The VO2 max runs, aka interval training runs, are run with intervals ranging from 600 meters to 1200 meters. There are also two special workouts. One is a 70 mile run with 14 miles at marathon pace. The other is an 8 to 15k tune up race. The fourth and last mesocycle is the taper. For the 24 week 70 mile plan, mileage will reduce from 74 miles in the third last week to 57 miles in the second last week and just 38 miles before the race in the last week. In terms of key workouts, there is a 5 mile tempo in the third last week, a 3 times 1600 meters VO2 max workout in the second last week, and a dress rehearsal of a 2 mile marathon pace run in the last few days leading up to the race. So what are the key characteristics of the Fissinger method? 
The Fissinger method is very heavily influenced by the Lydia method. The periodization is one of the characteristics. The Fissinger method first focused on endurance and aerobic capacity, then improving the lactate threshold, followed by speed and an aerobic capacity. Leader also put a lot of emphasis on long runs, and there could be up to three long runs per week. The Fissinger system, however, modifies this concept a little bit and recommends one true long run and up to two medium long runs of 10 to 15 miles. The Fissinger method also emphasizes lots of runs at our general aerobic pace, which could be up to a few minutes lower than our threshold pace. The Fissinger method also doesn't believe in doing training runs at the marathon pace. The thinking is that it would take longer to recover from running so long and so hard, and it provides relatively less benefits. This concept is quite different from many of the newer training methods. So, what were my results? Remember my goal race was CIM in early December 2008? In September 2008, I ran a 10K race and improved my PR from 43 minutes 42 seconds to 41 minutes 41 seconds, a 2 plus minute improvement. In mid-October, I ran a 5K and broke 20 minutes for the first time, improving my pre-marathon training 5K PR of 21.05 to my new PR of 19.53. And finally, at CIM 2008, I ran 3 hour, 14 minutes, 31 seconds, and be killed. So in a way, the Fissinger method worked really well for me at that stage of my running life, for a few reasons. First, my aerobic capacity prior to my marathon training was really lacking. By increasing my mileage, doing lots of medium long run, long run at general aerobic pace, I was able to build a much better aerobic engine. Second, the structured lactate threshold runs was really helpful for me to improve my strength and endurance. And the VO2 max runs at this late stage of my buildup really helped me improve my speed. I immediately signed up for Boston 2009 and largely used the same training plan to prepare for it. I didn't meet my goal time mostly for reasons other than my training. I used the Fissinger method one more time for the 2009 CIM and took my marathon PR down to 3 hours 8 minutes and 8 seconds, an improvement of more than 6 minutes from a year ago. Along the way, I also took my half marathon PR from 1 hour 40 minute 38 seconds a few years before, all the way to 1 hour 28 minutes and 50 seconds. So, BQ, checked. Half marathon PR, checked. 10K PR, checked. 5K PR, checked. Logically, my next goal should be sub 3 in a marathon. It is a lofty goal, a very challenging goal indeed and one that I still haven't achieved as of today, unfortunately. At the end of 2009, I looked at a lot of information available on the internet. Also participated in a lot of foreign discussions. I decided to change my marathon training method. I chose the Hudson Marathon Training Method. Brad Hudson, together with Matt Fitzgerald, wrote the book, Run Faster. One of the main factors why I switched to the Hudson plan is that newer training methods arrange the types of training differently from the traditional methods like Fissinger. Specifically, speed work is done in the earlier stage, and as we are getting closer to race day, we'll be running more goal-paced training runs. The Hudson system follows this newer concept. Essentially, it is anaerobic and speed first, then aerobic. The Hudson method promotes the concept of adaptive running. It recommends us not to follow any plan blindly, 
but customize our training based on a few key principles. We need to know what works for most of the runners and also what works for ourselves specifically and then add or subtract types of training runs based on our needs. The key is to make sure we have two to three key quality workouts a week. Similar to the Lediate method, the Hassan method also advocates for higher mileage. How high? As high as possible as long as we don't get injured and the quality of our workouts are not compromised. Interestingly, as similar as the Lediate method and the Fissinger method are, the Fissinger method doesn't put a lot of emphasis on hill running. The Hudson plan, however, does include lots of hill sprints, as well as some hill repeats and some hilly training runs. Even though the Hudson method is influenced by the Lediate system, the Hudson method has less emphasis on periodization. It does still divide the build-up into three phases. If you look at the sample training plans in the book, you won't find any explicit phasing. The sample plans for marathon training are generally 20 weeks long, so each phase is just a few weeks long. The first phase is called introductory. In this phase, the goal is to increase mileage with a lot of hill running so that our neuromuscular fitness is improved and we are ready for the tough training later. For the marathon level 3 sample plan, I'm guessing that it is the first 7 weeks. On Tuesday of each week, there is usually a frontlet run starting from 8 times 30 seconds in week 1 all the way to 4 times 6 minutes. On Friday, there is usually a progression run. On the 4th Friday, there is a 4 mile maximum effort time trial. On the 6th Friday, there is a 2 times 15 minute tempo run at half marathon pace with 1 minute recovery. On Sunday, the long run is usually a progression run from 12 to 16 miles. At the end of the 7th week, there is a 10k or 15k race. The second phase is called fundamental. In this phase, the training runs will be more targeted. The paces of the training runs, either at the faster end or at the slower end, will start to converge towards the goal pace. It looks like the second phase starts from week 9 and finishes in week 15, after the recovery week in week 8. In week 9, there is an interesting workout of 5 times 3 minute hills repeats at 5k effort. As well, as well as an 8 mile marathon pace run later in the week. In week 10, we will do another 5 times 3 minute heel repeats, but it also contains, in my opinion, one of the hardest training runs in the whole program. 15 minute marathon pace, 15 minute half marathon pace, and 15 minute at 10k with 1 minute recoveries. Even though I increased the recoveries from 1 minute to 3 minute, I didn't hit the paces even once between 2010 and 2019. I finally hit it in 2020. Oh well, too bad there were no races during the pandemic. There are also a few very interesting workouts in this phase, including the 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3 minute ladder and two sets of 10 times 400 meters with one minute recoveries, two times 10 minute tempo and three times 10 minute tempo. It also has a few VO2 max runs like 6 times 800 meters and 5 times 1k at 5k pace. At the end of this phase, we are supposed to do a half marathon race or a time trial. The third phase is called sharpening. This is very different from the Fissinger method, which includes a lot of VO2 max runs. The Hudson method, on the other hand, would have a lot more runs that are near goal pace or just slightly faster or slightly slower. In the sample plan, it is from week 16 to week 18. There is a 10 times 1K at 10K to half marathon pace with one minute recoveries, six mile progression run from marathon pace to half marathon pace, four times 10 minute tempo run, and finish with a good test, the 10 mile marathon pace run. 
Finally, the taper. The Hudson taper strategy is heavily influenced by the renowned Italian coach Renata Canova. The goal is to practice running at goal pace as much as possible while reducing mileage in order to peak at the right moment. So what were my results? The first time I used the Hudson plan for Boston 2010, I set a PR with a time of 3 hour 4 minute 2 seconds. The second time I used it, I set another PR at Boston 2011 with a time of 3 hour 2 minute 37 seconds. In 2011, I set yet another PR at CIM with a time of 3 hour 2 minutes 28 seconds. I used it a few more times, but I didn't set any more PR due to a number of other reasons. In 2012 at CIM, it was super rainy and super windy. I decided to save myself for Napa in March 2013. But I also experimented with lower mileage and faster paces, and it didn't go very well during the buildup. Unfortunately, I started getting quite out of shape after that, mostly because of work. I finally decided to get back in shape when I signed up and trained for Berlin 2019 many years later, but I was so out of shape during the build-up that I didn't do any key workouts at all. I did train very hard for London 2020, and I finally started hitting all my target training paces, something I've never done before. But all the races were cancelled after March 2020. Fast forward to 2022, I started Project Last Hope, my last few opportunities to break three hours as a 50 plus years old runner. I have signed up for Napa in March, Paris in April, London in October, CIM in December, and Tokyo in March 2023. I could easily just follow the Hassan plan again. It has worked really well for me. However, I decided to try something else. I like to shake things up. I see that many people are using the Hansen's plan and decided to take a look. I think his training philosophy can fit me very well at this point. A key principle of the Hansen's plan is accumulated fatigue. Compared with Fissinger and Hudson, the Hansen's plan doesn't pay as much attention to high mileage. The reason is that it advocates doing our key quality workouts when our legs are tired. It simulates the effect of training for the last 16 miles in the marathon instead of the first 10. It also doesn't emphasize periodization. I primarily follow the advanced plan right now, but have customized it quite heavily and mixed in some elements from Fissinger and Hudson's. They're usually a speed workout or a strength workout, and a tempo workout, and a long run in addition to easy runs every week. On the surface, it looks like just any other plan. However, the key of this plan is how to do those key workouts correctly. For example, starting in week 3, there is a tempo run every week. It starts at 6 miles and gradually increasing to 10 miles a week before the race day. Tempo run in the Hansen's plan is not run at lactate threshold pace. Instead, it is at the marathon pace. This is a key difference. It means we are starting to train at goal pace in week 3 and pretty much all the way to taper. From week 2 to week 10, the plan calls for the speed workout starting with 12 times 400 meters to 3 times 1600 meters. Recovery is generally 400 meters for most of the workouts, and it is 600 meters when the interval is 1600 meters. The workout is usually at about 5k pace. From week 11 to week 17, however, the speed work will become the strength workouts. There are a few variations, like 6 times 1 mile, 4 times 1.5 miles, 3 times 2 miles, 2 times 3 miles. The target pace of the workout is around the half marathon pace. It doesn't look like there is anything special about the taper other than decrease in mileage. The Hansen sample plan is relatively low mileage. It seems a little strange. I heard how many miles Dessa Linden ran when she was on the Hansen Brooks team. 
but the highest mileage in the advanced plan is only 63 miles a week. As I react better to higher mileage, I decided to customize my run for a much higher mile per week. The weekly long run is also relatively short, with the longest one only at 16 miles. I usually don't react to short long run training, so I also changed this part of the plan. I think Desi definitely ran over 20 miles quite a few times in her build up. What will the results be? I certainly hope I achieve my goal in one of my next five marathons. Stay tuned for my results. Thanks for watching.